Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to Satisfactory. Now, in the last episode, I continued the build of my ambitious fused frame factory and mentioned that I'd be tripling the output, which meant gathering some extra materials and then getting to work on the refineries and foundries. Now, today, we're going to be continuing that building with over 200 new machines. But before we do, I've got a train to catch. Boom. All right, so I had mentioned that I built a bypass railway to clear up the traffic going into the oil processing plant, which is where we're headed now. But that bypass, it probably wasn't the right term for it. What's really happened is I've shifted the main line further out to the ocean there, and that's the main railway used to get around the map. The line I'm on now, this is only ever used by trains that want to use this particular station. So previously, the double rail line used to continue straight along the direction I'm looking now and around the factory, but it was just a little too close to it, which meant the trains going out the back and around here were blocking the initial junctions to come in. That can't really happen now because the trains that want to come in are just going to kind of park up with their different path signals, and they've actually got a new double line, one specifically designed for the oil train. So this train is going to stop here before it goes into exports. We've got one waiting to go into exports and another one's in exports right now. Imports is currently going to be blocked. That's only ever going to happen if there's three trains waiting at the same time. There can actually be six trains waiting at the same time, but I've given lots of room for that before it gets down to that initial junction where I jumped on from. Now, you might be wondering about Circuit City, that computer factory that we built before. It is completely powered down. It's got to move. We got to build a brand new computer factory somewhere else because that one's just... It's unfortunately too close to this place and its output's just not very big. And the factory itself just wasn't big enough anyway, so we're going to be building a new computer factory soon enough. So, long story short, this place is working pretty much flawlessly now. The trains are great, and as long as we keep it to at least just nine trains using this place, then it shouldn't be any problem. But nine trains of length seven will start to cause an issue again. So you can actually see where the old train line used to be. It used to be right there, those two lone pillars standing up. That's where the old line used to be. It's sort of just entirely shifted further out, which also gives us more space in here for trains looking to leave. Uh, we can have more of them queued up. So I thought I'd just quickly show the petroleum coke area as well. Not much to really talk about other than we put a roof on it. We got some skylights and things like that. Place is looking clean AF. Really happy with how it came together. 20 refineries doing our new petroleum coke. And then down here, I've tried to clean it up a little bit uh, in terms of like how we're raising it and splitting it onto kind of that one unique belt or the, the vertical kind of stacked belt. Looking pretty good. I'm in a bit of a hurry, so I don't want to stick around for too long. We have to catch a train out of here, and it seems like it might be the last one. And then we're going to get to work on the stuff that's on the right-hand side of the screen, the fused frame factory. Today we're going to be mostly fig figuring out the constructors, and then we've got a few additional foundries to place as well. And then the logistics of all of it. If I've got any time left at all, then we'll get up to assembly. All right, here we are. So this is the circuit... Oh, no, sorry, the crystal oscillator train. So we'll just ride this one out of here. Let's just hop inside of it, let it do its thing. But I thought I would just mention, I've cleaned up my map as well. So I've tried to declutter it, I removed a lot of the stamps, and then I added a lot more kind of... Um, What's the word? Markers for all the different factories we have. So now we have the aluminum refinery in there, the fused frame factory, the crystal oscillator and radio control unit factory. And we are, of course, down here at the oil processing plant, and we are just pulling out now. So I've had a lot of time between episodes just checking these trains and really feeling them out, and everything's working pretty well now. I'm pretty happy with the path signals. You did just catch it there, and one of those instances where we get a pileup of three or four trains together. It's actually pretty rare that that happens, but it's good to know that when it does happen, things are still clear and we're free to go through. It might look like a lot of clutter in terms of the signals, but as I mentioned in the previous episode, I basically learned that if we have a path signal before a block signal, a train is never going to wait at the block. It'll wait at the path until the block is free. So that's like a block signal that might look like, oh no, like why would you want people waiting on the other side of a junction? That's a terrible idea. But in terms of just, it'll never do that, or at least it shouldn't. It'll only ever wait at the path signal. Once it's free, it should move through. It's pretty rare, but there are some instances where it might happen. But it, it should be like so rare that it almost never does. Hopefully never. <laughs> Um, I want to, the, the exceptions are usually when I throw down a train and kind of mess up stuff, things can do that, but other than that it should be fine. Alright, we're here at the aluminum factory, I should mention as well, that these two stations are now facing the same direction, that was another big effort of mine to actually get the station logistics working correctly, so when trains are facing the same way, that means the building itself has just one in, in, 
intake input, you know, a junction leading in and a junction leading out on another side. And that makes things a lot less complicated as well. You don't have trains exiting and entering at the same place at the same time, causing a little issue. This way it's more free-flowing, right? Everyone's going the one way. It does mean that some trains might have to loop around if they're going just back the way they came, but that seems to be a much much simpler solution than what I had had going on before. So I just thought I would pass that on. Hopefully it makes some sense to people. So my rules are basically now no train longer than seven in total, and all stations must face the same direction, you know, have their input and output facing the same way. Um, so yeah, so that's basically it, and everything seems to be working just fine. So here we are, the fused frame factory. I can't even really remember what's changed since we were last here, but let's just hop out. Nailed it. All right, so we have our import blue line, we have our exporting red line, and our green line, which is the gas exports, just in case we've got too much. So we have all these signs here to let us know what's going to be going on in the factory, and I've extended it out for the full recipe of this entire place. So what we've got in place at the moment, upstairs, is we built the 24 foundries. So you can see 23.88, right? So 24 foundries, making basically 2,400 steel ingots. Those are in place right now. What else was in place? We put in the six refineries doing copper ingots, and we put in the 11 other refineries doing concrete. So I think that's everything that's in place. So today, we're going to be working on the bottom things, the constructors. Excuse me. And uh, those extra foundries. So the seven foundries here, and then the... I don't know, 100 plus constructors. That's what we're going to be mostly working on. If we got time, we're going to build out the next floor above and start doing the assemblers, of which there's 73 or something like that. Then it's manufacturing and blending. So just really quickly, I won't bore you because it is just stats, stats, stats. But what's going to happen is once we get our iron plates, we're going to make reinforced iron plates. Once we get our reinforced iron plates, they're going to be combined with some steel pipes to make the modular frames. The assemblers are then going to take in that concrete and steel pipes and make encased industrial beams. And all of this is going to go into a manufacturer. Now, I just realized something. That says 90. That says 120. Bear with me. Why the hell is that? I might have to look into that. That could be a problem. Yeah, I'm looking at my Excel sheet. It seems like it's wrong. Those numbers should be the same. But anyway, it doesn't really matter. We'll figure it out. Uh, so here we have our blender at the very end, doing fused modular frames. So it's one-to-one -one with the heavy modular frames it gets. So it's going to take 16 of them, leaving 20 in reserve for us to use for other things. Mix it with the aluminum casing, which will be coming in here via rail, and nitrogen gas, which we set up in the first part of this build, and by building a bridge in the distance. All right, so let's hop on upstairs and see. Let's just get to work. The constructor's going to have to be built no matter what. Um, I might take a quick pause and just go through that Excel sheet and make sure I haven't messed my numbers up because I suppose the ones making steel pipes are quite important to us. Uh, just very quickly, on this logistical floor, I've just kind of tidied up some of the actual belt work. So remember, these are going to be the foundries upstairs, and these will be the foundries upstairs. So I raised uh, some of the splitters and mergers just because the train stations are going to be underneath them, at least to this part. They shouldn't come further back than that, but you never know. That's just to leave a little room, just in case we want to move some belts around. Um, other than that, I did actually have signs suspended off the walls for this, but I ended up getting rid of them. I'll probably use them again, because the future blueprints that I plan on using in this episode will have signs baked into the actual floor holes and stuff, so we can actually see what's going on. So this is new. We're delivering, in testing the trains, I need to actually make sure I was delivering the petroleum coke. And to get rid of, I think it's something like 1,200 petroleum coke, I needed just, I don't know, three of these to... It's a long story, it's a very long story, but I needed to, funnily enough, actually have a belt of 480, another one of 480, and another one of 780, because I know there's memes going around about all that right now. But um, yeah, so it's just, it should be consuming what this factory basically will be consuming for petroleum coke, and that way I can kind of test if it's all working as intended, which it seems to be for now. All right, so let's just hop upstairs, and boom. So this is where the foundries were previously. But now I've got them all in a lovely straight line. Two straight lines of... Is it 10? Or 12? Yeah, it's 12. So we have them nice and numbered. Check out the signage on this, these bad boys. I did this right after the end of the last episode, actually. So you might have even seen it in the thumbnail. Um, and I guess I shouldn't really done the thumbnail if it wasn't in the episode, but... It is what it is. The foundries are in the episode, just not the signs. Uh, but yeah, looking good, right? We've got 24 foundries. I really like the look of them. I love this. I, I know I made it and everything, but I just think it's it 
it came together very well, better than I could have anticipated. So the lines just happen to fit. We've got gaps of two between each one. We've got gaps of two here. So it just, I'm really happy with it, basically. I've used this kind of muted yellow as well. It's not super bright. Um, so very happy with how that looks. And then it kind of looks quite nice then for the refineries here. So why did I leave this gap? Well, that's because that's where the first constructors are going to go. We need 15 constructors taking in copper ingot and throwing out wire at 426. So these are the refineries doing copper ingots. So we've got six here at the back. These ones are doing concrete. So I guess if I could have my way, maybe I would have shifted them over, shifted them forward. It doesn't really matter. The point is that down below, it should be easy enough then to just drag their copper just around, not too far, over to the next line over here and feed all of these machines. And then these foundries are going to be making steel. And that steel is going to go into a massive block of 80 constructors making our steel pipes. So that's the number I got to check. I got to see if I've messed up or if I've fudged the industrial encased beams. Um, so bear with me and I'll be back in just a moment. All right. So luckily, it seems like my Excel sheet was just slightly wrong, not the numbers themselves. So basically, this should just say 120. It'll actually make 120, not 90. That was just an error on my part. So thank you. Jeebus, because I did all this planning. If that was wrong, that would have been that would have caused everything to just cascade. Uh, so that should be fine. We should our input should be 600. That should be 840, and that should output 120. That should be okay. So we can get to work. Rest assured. I just had that at the back of my head. Like, oh, if that's wrong, the steel pipes are going to be a disaster. So, luckily, we're okay. So let's get upstairs to the very tippity top and start building. Now I've taking the liberties between episodes to do some of the blueprints out for this area, so it shouldn't be too difficult to just slam down most of these machines. Like I said, we've got about 120 constructors to get to work on. So, a constructor, conveniently enough, takes up one foundation pretty much in size. Slightly more, I think. It spills over a little bit. But we're going to build them in the center of this one. So we'll chop this one away, chop that away. We're going to build a lookout tower. Like so. And we'll hop up and just throw down the first constructors. Now, I blueprinted this simply because I like to include some of the signs and stuff with it. So what I should actually do really quickly is I know that for the ones doing wire, we need 15. So there we go. We've got all the components for that. Steel pipes, we're going to need 80, which is a lot. Um, for iron plates, I actually can't remember, but off the top of my head, I think it's something like 10. And then we're going to need... Iron ingots, foundries, something like seven or eight. All right, so that's all the recipes I'm going to need on my right side of the screen now. So how are we for material? So I'm going to be a tiny bit short on quartz crystal and iron rods, but it looks like we've got everything else. Needed a huge amount of iron plates, so I have stacked my inventory with that stuff. Um, yeah, iron rods, might have to make a run for them. I don't think I've got any on site, but let's just build as much as we can. All right, so let's get started. This is just a lazy category for me because these are all meant to be built in this factory alone and nowhere else. So constructor with wire, it's got a foundation block on it, so I can gauge the correct height. Whoops. Oh my god. Right, there we go. That should be the center, I think. Oh, we rotated the wrong way. Once the first one's down, it should be easy, though. I think that's it. So what I was looking at when placing that is this thing. If this comes over the spoke, like comes over the center line, we're right. If this one is behind the center line, we're centered, yeah? So that's the way I was judging that. All right, now there's a little bug with this where you'll notice it's like all black right now. If I just do this, there we go. We got a little bit of orange in it. And then also the black is more gray. So it's gonna be orange and gray because it's making wire. And it's wire one at 100%. So there we go. All right, and now we just have to stack them all together. It should be straightforward from here on out. Hold control, switch to blueprint mode. Oh, I did have this issue before, actually. Okay, so this is the same issue I had when I moved the foundries. Just have to get really close up to its face and make sure we're facing the right way, which I think we are. It's hard to tell. Are we? Uh, yes. Okay, cool. So there we go. Should be easy enough, then. We just have to be really close to it when we do it. So two. So that's three, four... Well, no need to count, I suppose, out loud. It'll just count down on the right side for me. I think the reason it's a bit finicky is because of that big concrete block I have on the bottom. But that is basically keeping its height correct, so I'm happy to do that. 
Now we're just going to extend this the entire length of the line. So in between episodes, I kind of looked at the size of the floor and basically just worked out, you know, how many machines can we fit on each block while also keeping the symmetry of the place. Uh, so I've got it all figured out, I think. So there we go. Wire one, and that's going to just say the same number over and over. Obviously between episodes or just maybe later on in this one, I'll just cut away, do all the numbers and cut back, and I'll reload the game as well so these tubes fix themselves. But that should be that. That's, uh... That's 15 constructors making wire. And then we have to underclock one of them. So I'm just going to hover over them with the color swatch thing. And they should paint themselves back to how I had it in the blueprint. Yep, there we go. All right. And these will probably be recolored at some point too. Sweet. Okay, so let's just pop this back in and pop this back in. And then if we really wanted to, I suppose it'd just be good to get it done now. Let's do the factory zone color. Bonk. Bonk. And then color it yellow. But a kind of a pale yellow. Alright, so it's not as clean as it could be, just because the tube's graphics are broken. But once we reload the game, that'll go away. So that's done. That's going to be 14 constructors. And one of them underclocked to 22%. Giving us 426.66 wires. So 22%. Quite low. Now, down below. Well, we'll look down below in a moment, actually. Let's just keep going. So let's go over to the next set of constructors. We need to build 80. It's kind of extreme, but it has to be done. So one, two, and then here. And then these are blueprinted pretty much the same way. They're just colored slightly differently, and their height is slightly different in terms of the things down below. You'll see what I mean when we go downstairs. Uh, so, 80 constructors. Hopefully it'll be a bit kinder to us and just let us do our thing with this. Uh, I think that's right. Uh, yep, as long as that, sp that arm is spilling over on this side, that's correct. Alright, yes, looks like these fit in just nicely, so no, don't have to be all up, in close, up close in their faces to get it done. Alright, so 80. get some distance. I'm gonna have to move those recyclers actually, thinking about it. Hey, they have their color and everything. Right, this is a much nicer blueprint. It just worked. Uh, yeah, so just uh, real quickly, we'll just drag this out a bit further. I need these to be active just to keep the petroleum coke flowing. There's a, a huge dependency network where if the petroleum coke doesn't flow, then I think rubber stops being made. And if rubber stops being made, Stuff like crystal oscillators and other things stop being made. Things just get backed up. So we need... I mean, there's recyclers here, obviously keeping it flowing. They'll always need to be here, or we'll need to build in... Probably makes more sense to build them in over at the uh, oil terminal itself. I haven't actually just done that for some reason. So let's just copy this. We'll just, uh, I don't know, rotate it here. This area will be chopped away a bit later. All right, I'm just going to wait for that auto save. Alright, cool. Alright, all of you can go. And then we'll just grab you. Alright, the material has continued to be sunk. And that just frees up a bit of space for us here because they were kind of jutting through. So let's go back to our blueprints, back to the constructor with steel pipes, rotate it around. And there we go. So that's our first line of 15 complete. Uh, so let's just keep doing that then. So we need two more foundation space. These things unfortunately don't blueprint next to each other. I, I guess I could have maybe thought about doing that, but I, I just didn't. Alrighty, so chop this and this away. Blueprints, constructor, we got 65 left to go, rotate it around, get the arms, one in front and one behind the line, and bonk. Yep. Alright, let's get some distance, look at it, hold control, rotate, and see you later. Oh my god, can you imagine doing this without blueprints? I mean, that came at such a good time for me in this playthrough before it got really... Like, the machine numbers got insane. So thank... 
Thank coffee stain. I mean, it's so good. <laughs> I just, I don't know if I would have made it, you know? Too much time would have went into placing every one of them with every floor hole and all. Or I just would have gotten very lazy and not made it look nice, I guess. The nice thing with this is you can make it look pretty clean, pretty neat. You only have to do that once and then just copy and paste them, basically. So that's pretty good. Uh, it's hard to see, but is it there? I think it's there. Okay. Just make sure about that. Yep. Alright, let's get some distance. So that's 30 done. 60 to go. Oh, uh, sorry, 50 to go. <laughs> so it's called S01 because it's making steel. It's actually making steel pipes. So maybe SP01 because they do that with other things because some machines might also have something beginning with S such as the foundries. Um, the foundries, I didn't actually mention it, just really quickly, they're broken into four different groups. So they're numbered, they have their percentage indicating their efficiency, target, and then they have their group and what they're doing. So their group is because the output is 100 per machine, uh, steel ingots, and that's just a lot for a belt to take. So we can only have, I think, six on one belt before it becomes too much or something like that for the amount that I'm making, obviously. Um, so yeah, I need to divide the belt up into four four ways. So to ease confusion, you know, we have nice signs saying this is C group, D group, so on and so forth, right, B and A. Uh, so that's been kind of fun to kind of try to make the signs feel immersive, but also help me out, you know, where it makes sense. Because if I come back to this factory in 50 hours, I, I won't remember, <laughs> you know, so that's kind of cool as well. So I'm, I'm planning on this one also making a sort of a control room that reminds me and sort of like how I have all those signs downstairs and the I have the Excel sheet. I'll keep that, I suppose. But those kind of things to keep it in world will be kind of cool. And that way I can just look in on things, power things down, turn things on and also just trace stuff back if we do have problems. All right, 35 more to go. It's like we're creating a little army here. They're so uniform. Don't know why every like second or third one is is yellow in terms of like it's encroaching something. There might be something down below. Uh, okay, we still have two more lanes to go. So it's there, and there, and then here. Looking pretty cool. All right. 20 left. Nice. All right, almost done. Okay, so this last area is going to be the where the kind of irregular amount goes. So I just want to have a look at it just one more time. It was we need to get to eighty. Yeah, yeah. So there's five rows so far of fifteen. So we're at 75, so we need to add in five more machines. So we need to go one, two, three, four, five, and here. So this is where we need to add in the next five, because I'm just gonna center it, basically. All right, so we'll just build that lookout tower yet again. Okay. Alrighty, the final five. What a journey. Um, so that keeps it nice and straight and centered. And then we just need these four more. And there we go. So that is 80 constructors built in I don't know, what was that? Seven, eight minutes, something like that. Pretty good. And let's just check, but they are all doing their steel pipes. 
So, one of these needs to be underclocked. I don't really need to underclock these, though. I might just leave it and let it kind of try to do that full amount. Someone will get backed up somewhere, but that doesn't really matter at the beginning. Um, because it'll be doing 2400. The amount it needs to do is just like a tiny bit less than that, but it, it's fine. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'll go through the signs and make sure these are all done properly, and we'll reload the game so we can look at it without any of the graphical errors before this video ends so that we can kind of get the full satisfaction, as it were. Uh, all right, let's just zoop this all back in. Just pop this one back in. That's going to need its pattern and its color. All right, nice. So there we go. So that's, again, just for a reminder. Constructors, 79 and then one of them, so 80, and one of them to 60%. The input is steel ingots at 2,388, and the output is steel pipes at 1,592. So those numbers are so specific because, you remember, I worked from the result backwards. So this is what's needed to get to there. But we could, excuse me, to make it even, just let it hit 1,600, let this hit 2,400. I don't need to actually underclock a machine. We have the materials to do it, so... It just depends, but to, if you want to have it like everything synced one to one, that is the target number to be hitting. All right, good. We have a nice gap of two between these. These all seem nice and even. My army of constructors. How cool is that, man? It looks like yeah, it's like an army of Sadrakar or something from Dune. They're all just standing perfectly in a line, waiting for orders, waiting to make steel. All right, let's check uh, the next one down. So this is going to be the row of foundries. Now it looks like I'm basically out of iron rods, so I might make a run for those. And anything else I might need going forward, I guess, for the assemblers. So foundries, we need seven of them. And then we need 11 more constructors. Got it. Uh, yeah, so I'll do that. I'll go. I have to make a big run, unfortunately, and go get the... Although there is iron here. Oh, uh, yeah, whatever. I'll just go get them. There's going to be a big giant box back at the base. So I'll go get the iron rods, and then I'll reload the game. And that way, we should see... Uh, the tubes and stuff gone for now, and then I'll reload it in the future if we do those two other lanes. Alright, be back in a sec. Alrighty, I'm back. I've made my run to get several resources, and I've also reloaded the game so that our elevator shafts, our little lift tubes, are tucked back where they should be. I've also, well there we go, we can actually see that these are the new machines in place, looking clean. Their signs still need to be updated. I have updated the signs of the first row of constructors over here, but then realized I had a lot of work to do. So I kind of gave up. So I've got the first row done. SP03, SP04, etc, etc, all the way along. So the first row is now done. All of our things are tucked in nicely as well. So place is looking clean AF. Looking real good. Loving it, in fact. Absolutely loving it. Look at that. It's so good. So symmetrical. <laughs> all right. So on to the next thing then. So it's going to be building... Six-ish foundry. Well, actually, you know what? Just to get the, one of the tasks done on the right side of the screen, let's do the constructors first, all right? 10.66 constructors. So to do 10, well, to do 11, really, this is a row of 15. So, hmm. Well, we know that that's the center over here. So we want it to be in the middle of two. And then maybe it'll work out. Not really too sure. So 11 constructors doing iron ingots. Oh, interesting. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's see. Constructors, sorry, iron plates. Did I say ingots? Iron plates. Now, that would be the center there. So we're looking to hit it in the center of this area and rotate it around this way, right? And I think that's the area we're looking for right there, I think. It's tough to say. Don't know if I've got any power up here. No, oh my god. Ah. I do like right down here, but I never dragged any up. Okay. I think that's right. Uh, I was just worried that I was coming over the edge of it too much. Ah, uh, yeah, I did. All right, we'll have to rebuild it. All right, that one's in position correctly. So let's just add on 10 either side. So five either side of that one. And hopefully that just kind of works out then. So one, two, three, four, and five. Nice, and they have their color and everything. 
Alright, and then another five on this side. And that should make it pretty symmetrical. Is that it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No, we need one more, just on this side. I think I miscounted. Alright, obviously we'll reload the game again one more time just to get rid of those graphical oddities. But that's what we're dealing with. So IP01, right? Iron Plates 01. Uh, okay, so that is all the constructors built. That's all the constructors that this place is ever going to have, I think. Um, so let's just toggle that one off. And say that that's done. Okay, that didn't do it for some reason. There we go. All right, foundries. To do the final foundries, we need this row. The reason I'm breaking it up like that is just because the foundries are going to be putting out ingots, and if the flow along, they keep, everything flows along this way, these are going to be pressing them into plates. So 213 plates. Cool. Uh, so how many is there? There's going to be seven. So again, we can work from the inside out because it's an uneven number. But there's 15 in this row, so it doesn't. It's not too bad. Look out. Alrighty. Whoops. So we'll start our new foundry. So we've got another thing here. Again, these are just copied off of the others. They just changed the recipe. That's really as simple as it gets. So foundry iron ingots. Rotated around the same way as its buddies. Now, it's actually got... A line that I need to aim for, which I think is there. I think. <laughs> All right. Please be centered. Yes, it is. So this this little divot here had to be centered, and it is. All right, there we go. Lovely looking foundry. So it's got to have six friends. So it's not alone. Now, I do recall this one being really screwed up for some reason wanting to go like super far out let me get rid of this yeah I don't know why it wants to do that it wants to space them out actually I'm I'm kind of okay with that I knew that I wanted to do that before when I was testing things so that'll be number two but that's fine three and four because its boundary shouldn't be that big. I don't know why it thinks it is. Is there something? Yeah, I'm not too sure. We'll show you when I go downstairs. But anyway, there's three and then one in the center. And then there'll be three here. But I actually don't mind it being spaced. It'll still fit within its block. So it might end up being actually even more... Less weird looking because it's making use of the space a bit more. So is that it? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep. So we have a block and a, a half, almost two, let's say. 1.8 blocks. And that's 1.8 blocks. Great. There we go. Symmetrical. So there we go. Iron ingots, part of the I group. Um, and 100%. We'll have to de um, bring one of the numbers down, obviously, for one of them at some point. So that's the recipe taking in iron ore and copper ore and putting out ingots. All right, so that's all the foundries are now in place. So next up is logistics. So something I can do quite quickly is just run downstairs and we'll delete all of the excess that came with those blueprints. So just stuff like this. It's really just the concrete that needs to go. And then I need to hook up some of the belts. Hmm. And yeah, patch, patch in some of the flooring and things like that. Alrighty, so I've just gotten rid of the all the excess concrete, so this is what we're left with. Just an absolute nightmare of having to pull belts together. It shouldn't be too bad, actually. It looks worse than it is. Most of the belts just need to flow into each other. It shouldn't be too bad. Uh, it'll be kind of similar to what I've done down this way. So if we just get to... Oh yeah, I have to clear out the concrete here as well, actually. Let's just do that real quick. All right, there we go. We're actually clear. So we can actually see what these are doing. Wire, 30 per minute. And then they can be merged together. So 30 per minute times 15 
is 450. So there's no problem having this all on one belt, for instance. So we'll just hook up this one as the first one. Nice and simple. And then if it needs to get divided into other machines or whatever, I'll figure that out later. But for now, we can just at least hook these ones up. So that row is just like done, simple as. And then this is going to be very simple because it's just its input, which I think is 20 ingots per minute. So it shouldn't be an issue either. And that's going, that's being fed in the same direction. Hmm. We'll just check upstairs as well. I think I'm, I'm happy enough with that. It's going to take in just the copper, which comes in. Ah, it's such a shame actually, because the copper will be coming from over there. So it probably would have been better if it actually came from... Yeah, because ultimately it's going to be coming from that floor hole and around. Uh. Alright, so I just had to change one of the directions really quickly. It was facing the wrong way. I've actually built this place purposefully in mind that all of the outputs should be facing north. So that's north. And all of the inputs should go south. And that should just give some order to the flow of the things on the logistical floor here. So it also just kind of made sense anyway. So these are the refineries that are going to be... These are the outputs pumping out copper ingots, six of them. And if they were going that way, they'd kind of hit into the wall. They'd need to move and then loop around. Just a bit more awkward, I feel like. Whereas them coming down this way, facing north as the output, curling to the right, so going east, and then curling again, well, basically curling down here, moving south as an input then. So once it becomes a thing that goes into something else, it's moving south. And all of these splitters then carry it all up, manifold style. So there you go. So, um... There's a, there's a lot of logistics to do, and because it's nighttime, I actually thought I would just show something really quickly that I'd been working on. People had mentioned, um, I can't remember who it was. Again, I'm terrible at remembering comment names, because I just read my comments, and there's obviously a few, lots of different names to remember. Um, but shout out to the person that mentioned, hey, why don't you put some street lights on these things? Uh, so that, you know, at nighttime, it'll just look a little bit better. So I thought about it. I was trying to look at a way to do it in a good way. <clears throat> so you've got your street light. You can aim it just like straight forward in the middle. So at first I thought like, oh yeah, along the side here. You know, and that way it would be... Let me see if I can get on the hover pack here. Yeah, it's a bit better here. So uh, the problem is that they, they stick out a lot. You know, the light, even if it's on the edge of the bridge here, sticks almost over to the other edge of it. It's the length of a full foundation, this light. So it's a bit weird. So I thought, okay, you could have them all in a straight line then. Just have them going in a straight line every two or three gaps. And that kind of looks weird. Something about it just looks a little off. So I thought, okay, we could angle them. And just that way they are basically facing into the center. Almost. They still creep over a little bit. You can have one there and then another one here. Offset. You know, so it's like left, right, left, right. Thought about that as well. All valid options. It's all just aesthetics at the end of the day, what you prefer. But what I'm going to go for is a blueprint that I made of a double pole. So the pole... Let's just do default mode. Unfortunately... I'm not very smart when it comes to making this blueprint. I made it raised, and it seems to be just permanently raised. Uh, do I have a blueprint designer? Can I make one with me? Could make one to show you what this actually is, just real quick. Alright. So, just load this up. Yeah, so I made it there because I actually initially loaded my bridge as a blueprint, and then I built off of that. Um, so what this is, is it's two, right? Very simply, two streetlights. A lot of people have done that kind of thing before. And then I stuck a power pole in the middle of it, because there is a gap. There's a slight gap if you want to have them kind of symmetrical to each other. And then I put a wall outlet under the power pole. So this way... This light can feed to the pole, this light can feed to the pole, and the pole will just feed straight down to a wall outlet. And we're going to tuck them in along the center of these things. So that's the plan. That was the, at least the initial idea for it. So it's not like super innovative. People have done these kind of things before. I don't know if anyone's stuck the outlet underneath. That's obviously very situational. For me, it's going to work quite well here. But in order to do it, it means that I need to create just a temporary foundation here. Zoop that out. And then I think we just... Uh, let's actually just make that regular concrete so I can actually see the center. There we go. So I think starting like here, we can start to place it down and just see what it looks like even here at nighttime. So we'll just put one down for now. 
Is that aiming the right way? I think so. Yeah, and there we go. Our little, uh, whoops. Our little power thing is right there. So what I can do with this is just build uh, a light switch. Maybe... Ah, oh, missing my... I have AI limiters with me. Let me just go grab them. Actually, they're just down here, I think. One of these has got to have them. Yes, there's 18. Okay, good. Sun's rising now. I don't know if we'll get to actually see these come on properly. Bonk. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> we'll see them next time they come on properly when I build a line of them. But you'll get the idea anyway. Because um, I just thought it'd be cool to actually see it at night time. All right, so let's switch. So a light control panel. I don't know where it'll be in the future, but we'll just stick it here for now. We'll grab this. Let me just fly or hover. Grab the actual power supply and the power, the proper power line is down here. And then now we've got a light power line as it were. Oh my God, autosave. Just get somewhere where I can stand. Oh, I'm okay. All right, um, yeah, so this will be the one that's powering the actual light. And it's a little finicky, it's hitbox. There we go. And I'll just pop it there for a second and then just stick it to the actual light switch, bonk. All right, so now we're powered on via a light control switch. And we could change the color, change its intensity, obviously. Maybe stick it to like, I don't know, 33% night mode. So it'll stay off for now. Turn it back on, leave it on, I guess. Well, leave it off. I'll just hook up maybe one or two more of these. So I think the gap is something like two foundations over and it should work. So one and two, is this the right? Yeah. So it needs to go there. One and so it looks something like this, and then ultimately these would just need to attach to each other. So yeah, I'll be curious to see, and obviously I'll just build these all the way out. Curious to see what you think of that idea, and if you think it looks good. I think it looks pretty good. It's kind of annoying it's in the center, I guess, but. Oh, and I built the first one offset as well. Good job, Darren. But yeah, we'll put the other ones... I'll make sure that they're on the actual center point like this. I think that, like, the actual thing looks good. I just don't know how it looks on the bridge, if that makes sense. But yeah, I'll try to use this uh, every now and then when I can. Uh, so, we'll just refresh this. And then they should come on with the proper color now. So there we go. And then we set it to night mode. Boom. And it's easy to get rid of. There's not many components to it. Which is good as well. So just get rid of that thing as well. And then we could just... I'd like to just place it again, just not offset. I obviously incorrectly did that one. There we go. Alrighty, grab the old cable. And just whack that back on. All right, so we're back online, and we're aligned, hopefully, correctly. Just refreshing it. All right, cool. Anyway, so that's that. Just, just, I just thought I would show that really quickly, a little change of pace from the constant machines going down. Um, so this floor is actually pretty much done. Yeah, I just have more logistics to do before we move up to the assembly floor. Um, so yeah, the, and then we'll do a reload and just make sure everything looks kind of nice. So let's see, we put down 80 of these machines. I don't think I should subject you to me building just a billion belts on these. Um, but let's just have a look real quick at maybe an example of one area. So this is where it begins. And then each line is taking 30 ingots. So we looked at this before, 30 times 15 is 450. So each of them can have maybe just a Mark II belt, thinking about it, because that's 480. Needs industrial beams, which I actually don't have any with me. I'll have to go get some. Yeah, so maybe I'll leave it, but that means that every row here can be effectively connected with a belt of 480. And then its output I'll have to check as well, just to be sure. What does it actually throw out? 20, I think. Yep. So 20 out. So 20 times 15 is 300. So we could have the... Um, uh, I guess not. It would still have to be the same tier belt, right? Because the belt below that is 270. Yeah, so 480 is the minimum. 
All right, uh, so yeah, so this is the input line and that's the output line. Input, output, input, output, and it just keeps going. Fair enough. All right, so I'll have to just link all those belts together, but I could do that in my own time. No need to actually have to hook it up right now. I suppose the next thing then is building up the floor above. So I think this has to go up to a height of something like seven. Um, yeah, so something I'm a bit concerned about is building off of the floor, do the walls line up? Because I'm building double foundations, which is a bit strange. Let's just go like this all the way up. So that's 10. Yeah, it is. I've done it well. Okay, good. Good job, Darren. I've made mistakes with that in the past. Um, so, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think that's where we need to go. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. That's going to be our next floor height. And then we need the underfloor. So people have asked me, why build an underfloor? It's just purely so I can have the material be different underneath than above. If I build coated concrete above, I get coated concrete below. And sometimes I don't want that. I might want metal or whatever else just something else so it's just personally i like to have the option to paint it differently so i use two now the floor above is going to be a logistics floor if we want symmetry we'll have a look at how tall that one is so that's one two three four so it's four wall heights up four eight sixteen twenty wait what one two three four oh it's just sixteen then yeah um all right so that's gonna be one two three one, two, three, and four. So we don't actually need that one. So that's the next two floors, right? So this is this floor, and then it's logistics, and then the next floor above it. Um, and it's going to be assembly. That's where all the assemblers are going to go. I think we need 60. So have I done that right? So it's one, two, three, and a half, which I think is basically what we got here, right? One, two, three, and a half. Yep. All right. So it's actually 14 meters tall. And I'm not sure how much concrete I've got on me right now, but probably enough to just start planning out this floor. So just use regular concrete. Foundation one. Just go straight out like that. And I'll probably keep the width and height the same. I don't know how I'm going to figure out the aesthetics for the outside of the building. I haven't really thought about it. But some of the floors are sort of staggered already, so that's kind of a good sign. It means that like it'll just look a little less uniform, a little more natural, a bit more broken up. It kind of looks a bit more brutalist that way. Uh, although some brutalist buildings can be super symmetrical, but a lot of the I love the ones that aren't, where you see these random pillars and stuff going through each other. Uh, so I've got a giant old box of concrete down here. There it is. Yeah, I'm going to have to probably drag power upstairs because it's a bit of an effort to get upstairs now. Um, also, there's a plan for... I don't know about this side, but on the other side, I've reserved some space to actually do a big hypertube room, which is central to the whole building. So it's not in the middle of the building, but it's like in the middle on one side, if that makes sense. It's center aligned, but it's not in the center. So it would be like, if this is the center of the building, it's aligned here. But it's not in the literal middle of everything. Um, wow, it looks so uh, obtrusive. All right, let's see if I can. I don't know if I can fly up to that. Uh, yes. All right. Alright, so I've just gotten done paving the entire upper floor for the logistics, the next logistical floor. It's a pretty big job. It's like 19 times 50, I think, in terms of foundations, the width and length of the whole thing. And, of course, I have double paved it. So we've got metal underneath and concrete on top. I've also reloaded the game. So now our constructors and their lifts are looking pretty good. No graphical errors. And the red lights are on once you reload the game as well. And I've also gone and fetched some encased industrial beams so we can continue some of the logistic work. The reason for that is I would have to build out another one of these and then start figuring out the blueprints to do the assemblers. I'll probably either do that in the next episode or make a big long cut and do it later uh, today. It depends. So I thought I would just do a little bit of the 
work underneath here because I do feel like people have mentioned they like seeing me work things out figure out how all these things are gonna go so now that I've got the beams to do it we can start at least adding up one or two of the rows so we get the idea um, for how this is gonna be managed so to get ourselves orientated just a little bit let me just fly up here real quick and we'll have a look at where it begins so this is the input that's the output and that's the way it is for every single row we're taking in steel ingots and we're outputting steel pipes Every row has 15 machines, 15 times 20 is 300 out, and then 450 in. So both of them are going to need Mark IV belts. Now what did we say? We said inputs are supposed to travel this way, and yet they are not. All right, so just as I was talking there, I realized uh, another error. Uh, so the error is actually a bit of a pain in the ass because it means that I have to do this 80 times over, which is these splitters are facing the wrong way. They need to be facing that direction. You might go like, oh, is it really worth it? It kind of is because these are taking in steel ingots that are coming from the foundries. So these foundries are outputting steel ingots. So you want this just to nicely wrap around to go into here and into every subsequent lane. And then they're going to flow down. Uh, which would make a lot of sense. And then these are flowing back up towards us. So, bit of a pain. I don't have to do the outputs, just the inputs. But it is a bit of a hassle, right? I have to basically do this <laughs> 80 times over. So I don't need to rotate this one. One, two, and then get rid of this one. Rotate it, and then snap the elevator back in. So... I'll do that. <laughs> I'll do that on my own. I'll go through the pain. It is a mistake that I made. I thought beforehand when I built the blueprint, I could have sworn I had it facing the way I wanted it to, but I guess I didn't think it all the way through. Maybe I initially thought I was orientating it. No, I don't know. They're facing the same direction, so I clearly just made a mistake. They're supposed to face opposite directions. Uh, but in the meantime, what we can just quickly do is get our Mark IV belts and still just link up the outputs at least. Uh, so let's just continue to do that for the moment. It's interesting, we're like ducking and dodging and diving over these floor holes, which are going to be carrying stuff up from potential train stations. It's the same with the gas one, actually. I don't think I ever gave the gas ones their input below. It might be good to see where that's going to be, so we know where to avoid. And what I mean by that is this, right? So we're storing gas here, and potentially some of that gas might be moved via rail. So I added these, but ah, that's why. It only goes up to foundation one. So these need to be cut and made into two foundations, just so our floor hole will actually work. And then I can see where do we need to feed these, if at all. There's probably way too many. I don't think we'll need this many, but it's just a just-in-case kind of thing. All right, so I thought it'd be kind of fun just to go through, like, what's on this floor. You know, all the machines are basically in place now. A lot of the resources are in the factory. We just haven't turned everything on and hooked everything up in terms of their belts. That's going to get extremely tedious, so I'm going to do some of that and then show you in the next episode anything I learned from it, really. If not, we'll just show kind of how it's working. But what we've got here is six refineries doing copper ingots, so they're mixing copper ore and water. So we have 85 copper ore coming in and 56 water, and that's all been fed into here already, so that's totally fine. And that outputs 213 copper ingots. Next up, we have a row of, I think it's 11 refineries, yes. 11 refineries, that's given us 17 total refineries, obviously with the other six. And that's doing 864 concrete. So we're mixing 1,080 water with 1,296 limestone. So 1,296 limestone going in there, outputting 864 concrete. That's for later. We then have a row of our wire construct constructors. So the constructors, we've got 15. So one of them is underclocked to 22%, doing about 426 wire, taking in that copper that we saw in the first row, processing it here, throwing out the wire. Then we have a set of 24 foundries, 12 on a row, looking good, broken into four different groups so we can divide up their material. And that's because they're going to be doing 2,400 steel ingots. One of them will be underclocked, so we'll eventually get 2,388. And they're taking in 1,800 iron ore and 1,800 petroleum coke, which is why we had to sort out the railway and uh, why we're just sinking that coke right now temporarily before they'll be fed up into these machines. Next block, we have a staggering, as I mentioned before, 79 constructors 
It's 80, really. 80 constructors with one of them underclocked to 60%, I think. And that's basically going to give us 1,592 steel pipes. So all of the foundries here making steel just feeds right under and right over to the large group of constructors here named SP, steel pipe, and then they have their number on it. There is some inconsistency with the refineries, right? Just because of the way I've done the signs on those. The refineries are all sort of classed as one group. Whereas these, there's so many of these machines that I felt like naming them based on what they make made more sense. So it's kind of an inconsistency on the floor, but to me it kind of still makes sense. You could, Like I would call the refineries R1 to 17. And it just happens to be that 11 of those refineries are doing something different. Um, Alright, so that's that block there, all handling steel pipes, a tremendous amount of steel pipes. These ones don't have any signs on the back, but on the front they'll have their sign. They're doing iron ingots, and that's from a foundry recipe. So let me look up exactly what that one is. So we have seven foundries, 128 iron ore, mixing it with 128 copper ore to give us 320 iron ingots. And those ingots go straight over to their next machines to get pressed into iron plates. And to do that, we had... How many constructors was this again? I actually can't find this on my... Oh, there we go. Uh, yeah, so 11. Uh, 320 iron ingots. So all of those iron ingots go straight in here, get made into plates 213. And then that's it for this floor. So the next floors over are going to be all doing assembly. Or the next floor up, that's going to be the assembly floor. And assembly is going to require something like 70 or 80 assemblers. And then the floor above that is going to be a combined manufacturing and blending floor floor so we'll have some blenders doing the fused modular frames and some manufacturers so what i need to work out is where's the main bus in terms of sending resources up from floor to floor so these come these resources all come down into this place and eventually they all feed out to roughly you know this line here all the outputs that will need to go upstairs feed out to this line of foundations so somewhere here i'll make a kind of a tower block maybe actually where those things are that just feeds straight up and juts out from the edge of the building. And we could even have glass frames so we can see them going up. That might look kind of cool and incorporate some of the designs we had in an old factory of mine, the motor factory. So we have glass frames, big tunnel fl flying all the resources up this way or tube and then up to the next logistical floor where it gets divided and sent into the next row of machines up and above. And then of course we'll have to have two maybe sets of hyper tubes that can take us up and around this factory because it's quite big, at least for me it's fairly big. And that's pretty much it. So um, I'm going to leave it at that, guys. So I hope you enjoyed the episode. It's a big build. I like to think it's pretty organized, and you can see it's sort of taking shape. So in between episodes, I'll just slap on a, a coat of paint here or there, add up some of those belts, and then we can get cracking on the assembly line, which should be a little quicker, I feel like, to do than the construction line was. And then maybe we can get to manufacturing blending as well. I'd ideally like it to all be done in one more episode, and we can just start powering it on. It's always the best fun to see. And then, the other thing, very thing, last thing I'll say before I go is I'll have to clean up at some point the railway out, because <laughs> it looks a mess. Um, but yeah, no idea how I'm going to do that just yet, but the lo logic of it is working, which is important. Alright, that's going to have to be it. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching the video. Consider liking it if you enjoyed it, subscribe for more, and if you want to support even further, consider becoming a channel member. Channel members get early access to my videos ad-free, and also access to my Discord, where we've just set up a new Valheim and satisfactory server for people to play on. Hopefully we can grow a community and add more games and perks in the future. Either way, I appreciate people just watching this far into the video. Thank you.